we're going to find the distance between two parallel planes. And we're going to do that using two methods. One will be using vectors. And the second method will be to use a formula. So if you like formulas, you can stick around for the second method. But I'm going to start with method one. So if we visualize our two planes here in three dimensional space. And what we'll need then is a vector from one plane to the other. But we can use any point on each plane. So if we look at our equations, and if we plug y equals 0, z equals 0, we'll get the point 8, 0, 0 on the first plane. Might just need to zoom out a little bit to show that that plane actually does go through that point. And then uh, for the other plane, if we again sub in y equals 0, z equals 0, we'll get this point where x is negative 7 over 2. So again, we could use any point on each plane. In this case, we've got two points that are both on the x-axis, but that's fine. And hopefully we'll see in a minute why any point on each plane would work. So now what we do is we want to use the normal vector. And because these planes are parallel, they're going to have a parallel normal vector. And remember, the normal vector is not fixed to a position. So but let's imagine we're taking the normal vector from one of these points. And then what we can see, hopefully, is we'll actually form a right angle triangle where the hypotenuse is the length of AB. And the height of that triangle is actually the distance we want, which is the distance between the two planes. And to find that using vectors, what we can do is take the scalar resolute of vector BA in the direction of the normal vector. We can use BA, we could use AB. It doesn't matter because we just want the distance. And remember, A and B can be any points in each plane, so long as one is in each plane. Okay, so for our scalar resolute, we want A, B, the dot product with the unit vector of the normal, or the dot product with the normal divided by the length of the normal. So here we can calculate A vector A, B. It's going to be uh, negative 23 over 2i. The normal vector, remember, we're just looking at the coefficients from our plane equation. So the dot product on the top is just negative 23 over 2. And the length of the normal on the bottom, I uh, just keep in mind when we state the distance, that's going to be positive. Okay, even though the scalar resolute is negative, the distance is positive. And then we can evaluate it with our calculator. So that's method one. It's the length of the scalar resolute of AB in the direction of the normal vector. And for method two, I promised you a formula. So we're going to start from this formula. So if we have a plane in this form, the distance from the origin is going to be on the top modulus of D and on the bottom, A squared plus B squared plus C squared square root. So for the distance between two planes, it's going to be quite similar to this. But I want to show first, like, where does this formula actually come from? So if we have a look at the diagram again and think about how would we get the distance from the origin to a plane? So if we have the position vector of a point, say, A in the plane, we can use the scalar resolute with the normal vector. So there's the scalar resolute formula again. But if we look on the denominator, well, the length of the normal, that's just going to be a squared plus b squared plus c squared square root. And on the top, that dot product there is actually also built into our plane formula in that that constant d is the constant that you get when you take the dot product of any point in the plane with the normal vector. So that formula there is really just the scalar resolute formula, just written in a convenient form. So from there, if we want the distance between two planes, well, it's the same idea, but now uh, the denominator is going to be the same, but on the top, we're just going to have a difference between those two constants. And if those constants were both positive, for example, then those planes would be on the same side of the origin. Uh, but in our example, actually, one of those constants is positive and one is negative, so the planes are on different sides of the origin. But that's fine because d1 minus d2 is going to have the effect of adding those two distances, which is what we want, right, to get the distance between the two planes. So it's quite nice the way that formula works out. 
And if we apply it in our case, we'll see that obviously we get the same answers as we did in the first method. So whether you prefer method one, the vectors and the scalar resolute, or method two, just plugging into the formula, they both should be fine. And good luck finding the distance between two parallel planes.